Oh no, a blue screen of death. Let me show you how to read a blue screen using WinDebug. Okay, let's get into it. This is by no means a comprehensive guide on how to read kernel memory dumps, but we have to start somewhere. So let's start with the kernel mini dump. The kernel mini dump is a way to capture all the information from the blue screen so that we can analyze it in WinDebug. First, to get a kernel mini dump, we need to configure Windows so that if a blue screen were to occur, it would save the mini dump to disk. Let me switch really quickly to my remote machine and I will show you how to configure Windows. What we want to do is we want to go to control panel. So you just click start and just type control panel. And within control panel, you want to go to system over here. So you go to system, then just give it a sec for system to load. What you want to do is you want to go to advanced system settings over here. Then within advanced system settings, you want to go to startup and recovery, click settings. And this will give you the settings on what Windows does under system failure for when a blue screen were to occur. Now, within system failure, there's a few options you can change. The first option, write an event to the system log. You want to leave this checked. What this does is if there's a blue screen, the Windows event viewer is going to record the minimal information on that blue screen. Definitely leave it checked. And what you want to do is you want to uncheck the automatically restart. This option forces the computer to restart when there is a blue screen. Uncheck it so that we can actually see the blue screen when it happens. If you leave it checked, you may not know that the computer has rebooted. It's still fine. It will still save the memory dump, but it's better to uncheck it so that we know exactly that the blue screen has occurred. Now, the most important option is this option over here, write debugging information. If I click on the drop down, I get a few options. I get small memory dump, kernel memory dump, complete dump, automatic and active. Select small memory dump for now. The other options are also memory dumps, but they save a lot of information that we will not be using for now. It will save things like the contents of the RAM. It will save things like the contents of certain registers. Um, we don't need that for now, for the very beginning, just choose small memory dump. The main reason we do that is because all the other memory dumps are really large. And if your computer were to crash multiple times, it will actually delete the memory dumps because it will only store one copy or maybe two copies, depending on how large your hard disk is. If you choose small memory dump, you can have a lot of copies. So it's really useful because if your computer crashes over and over again, you can use the all the memory dumps and compare them to see whether it's a similar reason or a different reason. So choose small memory dump for now. The small memory dump will be written to the system root mini dump. You can put any folder you like, just leave it as system root mini dump, it doesn't matter. And below it, you have two checkboxes which will be um, not highlighted, which is the override existing. Just leave it on whatever settings. As long as you choose small memory dump, that should suffice. Now, once you have made your settings, press OK, press OK, and that will save the settings in the Windows registry. And now the machine is ready to write a mini dump whenever it has a crash. And if you get a blue screen, you will get a mini dump file. Now, at this point, just use your computer like normal. Um, if you kind of know a way to make a blue screen happen, just go ahead and and do whatever technique you want. I am going to skip ahead to an actual blue screen which I captured from this machine and we will start analyzing it. So when a blue screen occurs, you will get a file in the mini dump folder. So that is C colon slash windows slash mini dump and you will get files like this. They will be really small. Like in my case, it's just a couple of megabytes. Copy the files to another machine that has WinDebug, you can use this machine, but what if it blue screens again? Then you'll probably lose your analysis. So just copy the mini dumps to another machine and I'll just jump ahead and open WinDebug and show you how to debug and how to diagnose these mini dumps. Okay, I've jumped ahead and opened WinDebug. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna open the mini dump. Um, just open it as a regular memory dump. What will happen is WinDebug will actually detect 
that this is a kernel mode memory dump and it will start downloading symbols and it will start loading itself and what you will see at the bottom here is that the prompt at the bottom it will say KD. KD means kernel debugger. If you open a kernel memory dump um, it says KD at the bottom because it, it wants to tell you that the commands you're going to type is not specific to a process it's the system level itself. Now debugging a kernel memory dump at this point is probably exactly the same as a user mode memory dump. So go ahead and watch all the videos in this playlist. They all are relevant. The only difference is that for kernel memory dumps, it is not actually attached to any process. When you type a command, it can actually look at everything in the system. So for example, if you type a command to look at a thread, you get to see all the threads in the system and not just the threads of a single process. But the commands are relatively the same. So as we begin, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have symbols. It's the same as a user mode application. We want to load symbols. But in the case of a kernel memory dump, the symbols will be for the whole system. So what I'll do is I'll just load symbols and I'll fast forward uh, after the symbols have downloaded and I'll continue from there. So the simplest way to load symbols is to have the environment variable to the symbol server. A simple cheat you can do is you can just type simfix. So what simfix does is that it automatically configures WinDebug to download symbols from the Microsoft Symbol Server. That's what I'm going to do right now. It's quick to do. Um, if you do save the environment variable, it works as well. Once it's configured, what you want to do is you want to run analyze-v, which is up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type analyze-v. In some versions of WinDebug, um, you can just click on these links over here. It will run the same command, but I'm going to type it anyway. And what Analyze-V will do, the first time you run it, is it will download more symbols. So on my system, I have a lot of symbols. That's why it's going to go really fast. But on your system, if you have never run WinDebug in a long time, or if you've never run it at all, it's going to download a lot of symbols. Leave WinDebug to do it. It might take 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Just let it download all the symbols. And once the symbols have been downloaded, it will then run the actual analysis. Once analysis has finished, what we want to do, we want to scroll all the way up, scroll all the way up until we get to the part that says bug check analysis over here. So the bug check analysis is very straightforward. There is an exception or a failure in the dump. The bug check analysis will read the record of that failure, it will convert the code into readable string and it will give you a clue on what to look for next. So in the case of this crash, it says driver interrupt not less or equal. This is a very common issue that can happen when a driver that is registered either does not respond in a certain period of time or the response is very stale. Um, it's it's a, mainly a hardware driver thing. I'm going to skip that for this video. I just wanted to show a uh, an actual kernel crash. But this gives you a clue on what this crash is. Go ahead and Google the error code. There's only about like 40 of these codes and you'll find a lot of help from people on the internet who kind of know about uh, what these codes are. You don't have to memorize any of these codes, but just search for them on Google and people will give you a clue on what to do. Now, in my case, I actually know that this is an artificial memory dump. What I did was I ran a tool that ran a device driver which will intentionally access an interrupt which is very high. It's designed to do that and it causes a blue screen. So with this blue screen, um, this is a correct uh, value. It actually tells you which interrupt it hits. Uh, it tells you the memory addresses over here. But what's really important at this stage is to identify if this is a hardware problem or a software problem. And that's probably the most important thing at this stage. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll right down and we're going to scroll down to a bit more information to do with which module. So if you scroll all the way down, you're going to get into the failure bucket. So the failure bucket ID and this area over here, which has the failure hash, will actually tell you whether the failure occurred within a driver module or within the underlying hardware itself. How it does it is that if there's a failure within the hardware itself, the bucket ID will not be a module. It will be something else or it will be the kernel itself. That gives you a clue. If it says something like 
the kernel uh, drivers, the, the ones that are part of Windows itself is the failure bucket, it's probably a hardware problem. But I'm just guessing, you probably need to open a few memory dumps to identify. But if in my case, I get an actual module over here, it's not a hardware problem, it's that module. Now, if a hardware has failed and that module is reading the hardware, it could still be a hardware problem. So it's a bit hard to figure it out from, from this stage, but because the error code said interrupt registered was too high, we can kind of deduce it is a software problem caused by this driver. Now, if it really is a driver that is causing the problem, we can get more information. The name of the driver is here under module name. This is the actual name of the driver. So if I see that the module is myfault.sys, which actually is, is kind of ironic that the name of the driver that fails is my fault. If I type lmvm my fault, what it will do is it will dump out the information about this driver. I can use this information and I can Google and try to find out who made this driver, uh, which package it is, uh, whether I need to update. What I'm looking for in here is I'm looking for things like the name of the driver. I'm looking for, uh, because there are no symbols here, I can't get any more. I'm looking for things like the image size and I'm looking for things like the timestamp, the checksum, and if there was version numbers, it will appear down here. This gives me a clue how old the driver is, whether it needs to be updated. Generally, if it is a third party driver, go and update the driver. If it is Windows drivers, do a Windows update and see whether that, that works. But this gives you a clue. If the driver is a sound card driver, you can probably assume it's a sound card that's causing the problem. If it's a video driver, you can probably assume it's a video card that's causing the problem. The driver gives you a clue on where to search next. Now, if you want to know what the driver was exactly doing that caused the problem, you can actually scroll up here. And if you have the symbols, you would get the actual function calls over here. The problem with symbols and drivers is that most companies do not publish symbols for drivers. If you have an NVIDIA graphic card and it, the driver has a problem, you probably do not have public symbols for the NVIDIA graphic card. So the best you can do is look at the Windows symbols and try to guess from there. In my case, the my fault driver called a page fault and this bug check over here uh, is intentional. What it's doing is it's just triggering the bug check. This driver's intention is to create a blue screen for debugging purpose. If you had a genuine driver that did something, you probably get a much larger stack. You could use that to try to find out what the driver is doing. The idea is if you see that the driver is accessing a piece of hardware or is waiting for that hardware, you can assume that hardware is causing the problem and maybe that will help you in trying to diagnose what is happening. Now, there is more hardware centric information up here, which has the uh, state of the disk. Uh, it has the state of the plug and play. Uh, these are like interrupt states and all that um, when the problem happened. I'm going to save debugging that uh, when I have a genuine hardware problem. If I dump, jump into that right now, it's going to be all crazy. So I'm going to skip that for now. And um, I'm just going to stick to the uh, software issues that are here. But these codes over here, these bug check codes and this P1, P2, P3, these are all part of the uh, initial record. They are identically the same as going up here and looking at this information here. They're actually just the arguments of the record. So this translation over here is a clue on what happened. In this case, it's just the IRQL, which is important. Uh, this other information uh, means nothing because it's just trying to read a value from the uh, higher end interrupt. Now, this is just one memory dump. You can't really deduce what's happening from one memory dump. If you had two, three, four memory dumps, go ahead, analyze all of them. If they all are the same, you can assume that that driver is causing the problem. If they all are random, you can assume something more sinister, like maybe the RAM is having problem or maybe the power supply is having problem. Because if you have randomness, then it is probably not a singular module that's causing the problem. It might be the whole system is suffering from that problem. So the more memory dumps you have, the better. And this is why it is preferred to take small memory dumps in the beginning until you fully like kind of get a clue on what's going on. And then probably you can take a large memory dump if you really want to look into the memory. 
Usually, the small mini dumps are more than enough to deduce whether it's a hardware problem or a software problem. Let me switch to my full screen. So this is the simplest way that I know to get started on debugging uh, blue screens. You capture the mini dump, you run analyze, you go up, look at the bug check, look at the bottom, which driver, that gives you a clue. Now there are more involved techniques that I will use in future videos when I capture more elaborate memory dumps. But give a start with just using analyze and that will help you a lot to deduce what's going on. Chances are it's a hardware problem because most software problems do not hard crash the system. Instead, what happens is Windows detects it and Windows will just unload the driver or Windows will just inform you that something's unstable. But if the system blue screens, it's worth a try to look at the kernel memory dump. I will make a more detailed video after this one with different kinds of blue screens. But that's for another time. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. Let me know if you have ever read a blue screen or if you have ever read a kernel memory dump in the description below. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out. Thank you.